You are currently in the car with a stranger. And you are heading to the theater. You've informed the others, and I think, didn't you hang up the phone call? Yes, they are not able to listen in any longer. Yeah, so you're leaving. It's probably a good 15-ish minute drive to the theater, depending on if you hit every single red light or not, which is a possibility in Oak Ridge. That's horrible. If you go 35, you either hit all of the green lights or all of the red lights. They're literally supposed to be programmed, so that doesn't happen. It still happens. Good. As he's driving, you notice... He seems kind of nervous. He's not really saying anything, but he's... fidgety. If you hold that steering wheel any tighter, you are going to snap it. Or I assume you could. I don't know. Oh, sorry, any kind of flexes his fingers and then goes back to white knuckling but he's just a slightly less pressure. <laughs> I mean it's not my car. I'm not worried about it. It's not even as nice as my car. Which by the way, we really have to get you on the uh liking better things thing. Yeah. So it wasn't until I came here that I even knew that there were things to like and now I do want to try new things but also I'm scared I'm not gonna get the chance to oh and why is that because and he just kind of pauses like he's not sure what to say would you like to roll to figure someone out I would love to roll to figure someone out I will also add the fact that because I mentioned in the private conversation that I felt like that whole conversation was a moment of intimacy, if you would like to... Oh, yeah. Because I know that gives you bonuses. When you share a moment of intimacy, physical or emotional, with another person, tell them a secret about yourself or owe them a debt. Either way, they enter your web and owe you a debt. Nice. God, I love adding the big bad to people who owe me debts. Yeah. Such a vibe. I don't remember from the conversation, but you opened up about some things. I mean, he knows about my backstory, which nobody else does, so... Yeah. But I imagine there will be more intimacy to be had in moments to follow. Nine. Alright, on a seven to nine, they ask one of you as well. What are you worried is going to happen? He just glances around nervously and is like, well... So you saw what I am a part of. Oh, I thought you were all of it. Well, I mean... I am, and I'm not. Hmm. I've changed in the time that I've been here, and I think... The rest knows that I've changed. Delightful. And it's not gonna be happy about it. And there might be more pieces on this side. That's that's why we need to get to your theater. Because that would be the best place for them to tear down the veil. Them the other pieces of you, or them my friends? Well, I mean, I guess they could too, but I don't feel like they would. Well, I, well your wizard friend might, but... That is very fair. Alright, but can I ask, how do you become separated from the rest of what is you? This is a very difficult concept, I must say, for a human being to grasp. You have broken off a piece of yourself and become somehow separate. How? So it starts like, it usually starts, because sometimes... Things fall between the different places, or you would call them the, the different realities. And we, part of us, will latch onto it and use it to get into somewhere else. It doesn't always work, but sometimes it does. And that is both us and it is separate. And it grows, and that's how I got here. But then when I became this and kind of gestures to the body single-handedly before putting his hand back, I 
became more different, but I don't know exactly how it happened, but I know I'm not the same, and I don't want what it is that I wanted when I first got here. Fascinating. What did you want when you first got here? Because I get the sense that it's not organized. It doesn't make sense. We just... Or I just wanted to... I guess I wanted to do what we've always done, which is spread control until we can consume. I understand that to an extent. What you showed me is the sort of things that make people go insane. So I don't want to dwell on that a little too much, but what do you get out of consuming? What does consumption mean? What does it do for you? It seemed to me that you were just, no offense, consuming and then shitting out broken worlds, which are no longer worth having. I think it's... The more things we consume, the more we become something. Because if, if all of those things just went completely away, then we wouldn't be anymore, but they're there. So we want to consume them, but I, I don't want to do that anymore. What do you want now? Well, I want to do like you said. I want to explore and learn things. And what is the rest of you going to do when and if it finds out? Like I said, we... We didn't know, I didn't know this kind of change was possible. I like to think that maybe I could reason with it, but... I think it's just mostly gonna be angry. It's gonna want to stop this change from becoming more than just, well, me. So, what you're telling me is that you are a giant, massive consciousness that wants to be something, not nothing, but is afraid of changing from being nothing? This all seems very counterintuitive, you must admit. What if there was something that threatened to change your nature? The very essence of what you are. Wouldn't you be afraid of that? Can I tell you something about myself? I have been afraid as long as I have been capable of understanding things. I have felt powerless for the majority of my life. So when something new and big and scary comes along that I'm afraid of, I find myself drawn to it, and I find myself trying to learn how it works so that I can take some of that power for myself. It's why I'm a vampire. It's why I became an actress. There is something about not wanting to be something that makes it much easier to become something else. And sometimes those decisions have been rash and perhaps a little regrettable. I mean, not everything turns out great, but yeah, no, I think I'm kind of familiar with changing very large portions of myself, but I think it does have to be a choice. I think it's not something that you want to happen to you, certainly. It's something you want to choose to do for yourself. I didn't even know I could make choices until today. But everything's a choice. You chose to give me your number. You chose to ask me out. You chose this car over another car. You chose that... Look, I'm sorry, it's very weird knowing that you're in someone else's body, and I can't pretend it's not. Like, I definitely have judged people all of my life for renting suits as opposed to owning them, and this is much, much worse. He just kind of looks down and looks really sheepish. Once we're to where we're going, I'll give it back. I kind of need it to drive, though. Well, yes, of course, obviously. I'm just saying, I don't know, in the future use one that's already dead or something? Speaking of, not to completely change the subject, but there are two guys? We found some guys. 
who don't have souls in them anymore. And that's concerning to me also. You didn't consume their souls, do you? Is that a thing you do? Because just for the record, would rather it not happen to me, thanks. I don't think so. I think that might have been a different piece of me that did that. But they're consumed? No, I don't think he- I don't think it ate it. I think it just pulled them out. We need to find other words, because if we keep talking about eating and consuming, I'm just gonna have to continue wondering what you're shitting out, and it's just very bad for me, so please. <laughs> you might now notice there's a text on your phone. Okay. From somebody saying that, well, Roz is still, like, unconscious asleep, like, well... She's still unconscious, but less of the coma unconscious and more of the just exhausted to sleep unconscious. So, the souls are back where they go. Does that mean that the, the guys that Windward has paused also have souls in them now? Yeah. Okay, great. They're, they're still- they're gonna be, like, sleeping for a while, because um, having your soul out of your body for that long is not great, but they'll eventually be okay. Where did it go? Oh, there it is. <laughs> Fair, Sorry, I noted. I dropped my crochet hook and I was like, where did it go? Very fair, I did see that. Okay. In that case. Right. Well, for the record, maybe please not that for me, thanks. Oh, I... I would never. Well, good. As long as we've established that, then that's great. But yeah, I don't know. Maybe don't pop souls out of bodies, just use bodies that don't have souls anymore. Find some freshly dead thing to hop in. It's better for you. It's better for everyone. Although, mm, I don't know. It'd be kind of icky. There's ickiness involved. We'll debate that later. Yeah, kind of all depends on if we stop the world from ending. Because it's... Right! What do we have to do to do that? I kind of like this place. I mean, as do I. If we can break the tether that's keeping it here, I'll lose its ability to hold on. Great. And I know in the past that we, or they, I guess they, I'm not really... And you'll also notice, like, you know the, you know the vibe you used to get? Mm. You're not getting that anymore. There's a different sort of feeling and aura to him. Got it. It's like his, his, the nature of this entity has changed. Now that they, it will be weaker afterwards. After the tether is broken. Yeah, because it, the tether connects it to, well, I guess you, the, the in-between is the best way to refer to it. The place between realities, the, the, what was once me. Yes. Gotcha. I definitely understand this is confusing. I am also confused. Yeah, not for nothing. At some point, once we survive, because I'm just taking it as a given we will, there's a whole strain of media and literature that's just existentialism and horror that breaks the minds of humans because it's things they can't understand, and we're just gonna have to give you a whole primer because if you do this again... I will go insane. And I am, again, just trying very hard to think around the edges of what you showed me rather than looking at it dead on so that that doesn't happen because we have things to do, but I will be having a panic attack and a breakdown about this later. Now that we've got that out of the way, what do we need to do? Sorry, I didn't mean to- It's alright, you couldn't have known. In hindsight, I probably should have. But in hindsight, I'm not sure how much I actually cared at that moment. I was very different going into that than coming out. That's the most flattering thing you've ever said to me. Now, focus up. What is our immediate concerns? Get to the theater. Stop it from breaking through. I don't suppose any of you know where they're keeping the tether, do you? I do know a guy, as it turns out, or at least I know a guy who knows a guy. I know a person who knows a guy. Yeah, I'm sure we could get our hands on it in short order. Yeah, the sooner you break that, the easier it will be. Wonderful. And then we just have to keep it from punching a hole in reality. 
How does one do that? What he know? I don't know. <laughs> no. I don't know. You don't have some sort of plant or metal that you're especially weak to. You don't have anything I can, I don't know, shore up reality with. Uh, I mean, there's probably a bunch of different ways I've... But I, I... I don't know. I see. We'll just have to figure it out when we get there. Wonderful. I love improv. Great. Wonderful. Well, I think... I think the people that you saw me with already know all of this. However, I don't think the way that we left and the way that I understood things to be when we left, I think they might try to kill you, actually. So I wonder... I don't know if me texting them would be the way to go about it, because... I could easily be under duress. There's no way for them to know otherwise. Hmm. Do you think when they see that I'm not in this body, they might be less likely to kill me? What will you be in? We have not discussed this. I think I'm strong enough to exist outside of it in some form, and it'll probably be easier in the theater, because when I visited there a certain amount of time long ago, that because I know at some point we established that he has been there, but I don't remember how long. I could tell it, I felt a little closer to the other places. It's very haunted. That makes sense. Yeah. Alright. So I could probably survive on my own alright, but there's no guarantees I won't just get absorbed back into what I once was. Not for nothing, but would that help your crusade of changing it from what it once was. Like, if you get absorbed back in, will you just, like, infect the whole system and spread out and make changes gloriously from inside? I'm only a small portion, and the rest is infinite, so, I mean, I can try. So what you're saying is we need to find more little separate pieces of you and get the jump on them, and then all of you get absorbed so that it all changes. Maybe, but also I feel like I'm just as likely to stop existing once I get pulled back and then I won't be me anymore. Hmm, that's troublesome. I can try. It might buy you some time if you need more time to do whatever it is you're gonna do. No, um, you as in all of your- you and your friends. I- I think you're- you're worth more- in the grand scheme of things, being separate from what you currently are, or what you were, separate as you currently are from what you were, I'm sorry, this is very... that's fine. So, here's my thought. How many... ooh, quantifying nothingness. Ooh, okay, how many separate yous can there be at any given time for there to still be... is there... Mm, how big is it? He thinks for a second. I don't know if there's a, really a number. Right, I understand. That's, that's why I'm having trouble framing the question. So you mentioned that you're a piece. How many pieces of a generally you sized make up the whole? How many pieces like you would need to change and be reabsorbed in order to change the majority of the whole? Oh shit, how many pieces of curiosity and desire to learn can change the embodiment of creed? creed? <laughs> That's a DM comment. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! You know what we've done! You know what we've done is we've recreated a Christmas carol. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> this is not what I wanted for myself. That's fine. It's me, the ghost of Christmas past. You just see him like momentarily get this look that's probably the look you had on your face when you saw the infiniteness as he's trying to process that question. 
I don't know, but that gives me a headache. I don't know if that's an option right now. Yeah, of course. We have something more pressing immediately. I understand. We do have to save this world before we try to save all worlds. I don't know, just keep it in the back of your mind. And again, I've discovered that if you just think around to the things you don't want to stare at, the void won't swallow you up. Less literally for me than you. Oh, hmm, okay. <laughs> He's just continuing to look vaguely horrified. And the driving is starting to slightly more resemble how Bart actually drives. Oh no. <laughs> Not full on how Bart drives, because Bart's a terrible driver. But <laughs> Millie is going to reach over and sort of steady the wheel with one hand a little. Just subtly. Sorry, this is a lot, and I wish I could be more help, but I'm... Frankly, I'm terrified that I'm not going to exist by the end of this. Hey, good news! So is everyone else that we're about to go and meet there, so... At least we all have that in common, isn't that fun? That's surely a word for it. We may need to investigate your definition of fun when this is over. As established, I walk towards danger and that has been a recurring problem, yes. Also need to find something for me to occupy after- we can figure that out later. Um, I might be able to interact through inanimate objects, I don't know. We'll figure that out. You have a wizard friend that might be able to help with that, maybe. But first, for- I do have a wizard friend. Also, I would like to just establish that there is a long and rich tradition of haunted dolls, and that would be great for me. I think I would love to walk around with a little doll that could scare people. It's very good for the vibes. <laughs> anyway, just think about it. What were you going to say? That actually does sound fun. I have a... We need to get this done soon. As you pull into the parking lot, you just... That feeling that you felt in the woods is coming from inside the theater. Oh, the bad vibes? From where I live? Yes. Wonderful, I hate it. Yeah. Charlie looks scared too. And that's... that's where you want to go into? You want to be in there right now? This was the choice you made? I mean, the other choice is sit back and do nothing and... I'd like to get a chance to explore this place before everything ends. Oh, well. When you put it like that, I suppose. So I will unlock the front door and let him in. Yeah, so as you step in, everything... It all looks fine. But it feels so wrong. I don't even know who you hire to clean this out. This... Yuck. We need a young priest and an old priest. <laughs> he just looks around a bit before... It's almost like he's trying to find something. He's like... I think it's happening through there. Pointing towards the doors that lead to the auditorium and the main stage. Of course it is. Everything happens through there. You're welcome to go take a look if you like. Come on. And he starts forward and opens the door. And I assume you're following him. Oh yes, very much after him. I'm not going first. Fair, I mean... Don't want anything bad to happen to Bart's body, otherwise you're gonna have a very upset Vahigante after you, but there are other things to be concerned about right now. Uh, mainly my own cowardice. Let's go. Because as you step through the door, you see this- it's like a sliver of darkness. And shadow that's like floating just a couple inches above the floor in the center of the stage. And Charlie's like, yeah, it's it's starting, but we still have time. We still have time. I should probably, and he goes and sits down in a chair, and you see this shadow come, pulling out of Bart's body, and Bart just kind of slumps. Still breathing. Cool. Hey, buddy. What you doing? Like I said, I can hold my own form here for the most part. I, I was starting to feel bad about doing that. Yeah, it was gross. Don't be in other people's bodies. 
Especially not without asking. Well, like, mostly not without us. Anyway, the important thing is, don't go be part of that other bad shadow. I mean, the plan is to not do that, and I realize now how wrong that is, and that's why I was starting to feel bad. And that's what consent is. Yeah, I am the worst person to be consent- uh, to teaching morality to what you are, but I'm so glad you're learning. Yeah, and I'd love to learn more, but we need to fix that first, and we start- Right, how do we fix that? Is there a way to, like, is there, like, magic darkness stitches where I can just go, like, boop, 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 and close it up? Can I corset the darkness? Make sure it's a whale bone. Well, steel bone. We don't use whale bone anymore. Right, He's well. He's like, let me, let me get closer and I can check to see if it's... What if don't do that? You said it was gonna suck you in and then you'd be gone. Well, we need to get a look at it. You can get closer and I'll try and help however I can. All tails, maybe I can confuse it for a bit? How about I get closer, and I'll describe it to you, and then you will not get sucked into it, and you can help us instead. Okay. That, that sounds good. I do think I should get away from this, though, and it's a somewhat sh like it's a somewhat humanoid shape, and it points towards Bart. Because I feel like the other thing that was in him is going to come back and I don't want to pick a fight with that right now. And so he just, just drifts away. Bart still looks like he's just passed out asleep in the chair. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick him up off the chair and lay him on the ground, which will one, give him cover, and two, seems a lot more comfortable than trying to, like, sleep in a theater chair. Good point. And I'll say, as you get up onto the stage, you hear this, like, faint crackling sound, and this is Hess. You find yourself standing. It's just in a room. There's one door. Remind us what you look like again. Yeah, um, so, you know, the traditional, like, ripped jeans, flannel, um, nerdy t-shirt, but it's kind of whooshing in the breeze as she has these dark, skeletal angel wings and like slicked back sort of hella style horns right now and then her eyes are completely black like almost the pitch of a black hole with this like dark crackling energy coming out of them <laughs> and just looking ready to fight god and as you step out the door you see millie stepping up onto the stage and this sliver of darkness that you don't know how you know, but you just know it, and it connects to that infinite thing that you saw when you were trying to find Cat. Oh, goody. Yeah. We're not going to make a smart decision here. She's just going to see Melly and yell, DUCK! And hurl a fireball, and she is casting elementalism at it and using dark arts to turn to violets with magic so I can roll with spirit instead of blood. Quick question. There are two, two pieces of darkness in this room. Which one? The one that's on the main stage that you're walking towards. She hasn't noticed the other one. The hole in reality. Yeah, she. it's the hole in reality. Cool, I don't have a problem with that. Have fun. Charlie's kind of off in the audience. and He is not as big or threatening, and also he has, gives off very different vibes. Friend vibes, let's go. Okay, yes, I duck. Slightly more human vibes. So you duck, so g give me the roll. Cool, I mark a corruption, so another streak of her hair turns white, and then I'm rolling. I need to channel my magic first. Yeah. Cool. Uh, what can I do? Yes, yeah, so I hold three, but I choose one from the list. So I will go ahead and suffer one harm. And then, uh, I will shoot the fireball. Okay. Eight all together, so I think that's a hit, but at a cost. So were you aiming, like, high or low on this thing? High enough to where when Millie ducks, it is shooting over her. <laughs> okay, so... I'd rather not turn the vampire into a torch. <laughs> She's very pretty. Thanks. Yeah. I'm sure she appreciates that, too, but... As you launch this fire in your rage, you 
aimed it a little higher than you meant, so it it hits the darkness and kind of like cascades up. And you see like the darkness ri like ripples, and it's like it's less. Do I hit the sets? You know the the curtains yeah. above the stage. Mm -hmm. They start to catch fire. They're not burning a lot, but okay. There is a little bit of fire going on. I knew this was gonna happen. I didn't realize it was going to happen this quickly. You have angry Bean, who I told you was ready to fight God. What did you expect? <laughs> That's fair. I just didn't expect a roll to where I could have things catch fire this fast. Well, the delightful news is that the curtain above the stage is called the Fire Curtain. So it's just really living up to its name right now. <laughs> You're not wrong. <laughs> I think Hess winces when she sees that, like, oh, shit. Thanks, buddy. Normal fire? Not a problem. Pissed off Hess magic fire? Curtains weren't quite ready for that. <laughs> no, you think? Really, Hess, what, what do y'all do? Did that have any visual effect on the darkness? It's rippling slightly, like you, like when you threw a stone into the pond. I don't like that. I don't like the fire happening. Uh, hey, Hess, any way of extinguishing what you've just done? Uh... She just spins her hand around and then launches a ball of water at the fire and then kind of twins it. She does one with her right hand towards the curtain and then another towards the darkness. Give me the roll. Cool. I am... Da -da -da -da. Uh, mm, that's only going to be a six. You would only have to roll for the turning to violence part, right? Yes, and I think I only have to roll the turn to violence with mark of corruption to roll. Okay. Oh, it's every time I roll. Okay, so I do fill up my corruption track this time around. Hooray! You are able to put out the fire, but as the water splashes, ag uh, splashes against this tear, just instead of hitting it, it swings around and comes hurtling back towards you. That's fair. It's fine, though, guys. My spirit is finally maxed up to a three. Hooray! And how much damage does that water do? So I was gonna say, it is a... I was gonna DM it to you, but it is a... Um, when you use elementalism, it is a three harm close or a two harm close area. So range, I would think, is two. Yeah. And just to, you know, keep everyone showing up to the party... Angel and Cole, you show up in the parking lot around this time, and you both get the bad vibes coming from the theater. And I feel like the doors were probably left open. The truck barely- uh, truck? Car. Car. Barely stops before Angel's- We're tackling this, we're dealing with it today, this is gonna be done. She throws the door open, and she's just into the theater. I'm still in the car, and I kind of yell out the window. We don't, we don't have to. We do, though. Damn it. So, are you just parking your car, Cole, and then getting out? Yeah. Okay, and are you also heading to the stage, or are you heading somewhere else? Yeah, I mean that's where the bad vibes are emanating from. Yeah. Yeah, and for Cole. I'm gonna probably pop my head in and assess the situation before I just start rampaging in. Yeah, so Angel as you run in and then Cole is in probably like not far long after you because the parking lot's empty. It's not that hard to find a spot. So what you both see is Hess and Melly standing before what looks like a dark tear in reality that's floating above the stage and you both see as a jet of water has launched at it gets slammed back into her. And Angel, as you're running by, you see a very unconscious looking Bart that is definitely not giving off the bad vibes that he used to be giving off. Just laying on the floor. Deal with that later. 
keep running for the stage then. Actually, she, upon seeing the giant terror in reality, that kind of brings her up short. And her first action is going to be more to get a lay of the land, read the situation, what's going on. How do we fix this? <laughs> yeah. I've actually got a move for that. Okay. Protect and serve. When you read a charge situation, roll with mind. On a hit, I get a question, and you have to, and then I get a plus one when I act on the answer. Gotcha. Ooh. That's 11. You get to ask two. Hooray. Okay. I want to say which enemy is most vulnerable to me, but can I twist that maybe and try to find its vulnerabilities instead? <laughs> and then the, what should I be on the lookout for? Four? I'm gonna answer what should I be on the lookout for. You've seen different magical beings and so forth that travel back and forth or like appear from places. You've never seen anything quite like this, but you know, whatever it is, it's not here yet, but it's coming. And it's probably gonna come out swinging. Yeah. For the vulnerabilities, you already know those. Destroy the tether, it loses its foothold, and then you just kick the shit out of it. Fair, yeah, okay. Well, that's boring. Nothing to, like, close the tear? Well, once it loses its foothold... I thought I already did that! I burned down his damn house! No, you need the nunchucks. <laughs> it has the- it has the physical tether that's keeping it here. But I'm not the one that's got that, am I? Well... <laughs> You don't know who's got that. I know, but I was told somebody did. <laughs> I have a suspicion who does, but they're very angry right now. Leave a message at the tone. <laughs> yeah, and you probably don't realize what's in that backpack. It's fine. Anyway, hi, it's good to see both of you. And Cole, are you also rushing in, or what are you doing as you see this? This place has a balcony, I assume. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I'm making my way up to the balcony. Wait, didn't weren't they told who got it? That was, you know, at one point Kyle had it. Okay, so I do know that. That was the last you heard. Is Kyle has that tether? Okay. Yeah, because Hess sent that in the group chat. Right. Yeah. And then Kyle got very distracted and left their backpack at the bomb's place. Uh, well, there there's very good reasons to be distracted at that point. <laughs> yeah. So Cole's heading up to the balcony, possibly to get the lay of the land, and... Angel's trying to summon her freaking staff again. Give me the 2d6. I just want to fix what's broken. Eight. It's just out of reach. Is there any way we can assist? I don't know if you can with this specific thing, because the staff is connected to her oath, which is fractured at the moment. Okay, that's- I, I figured I'd try. Can Charlie help? Since he helped break it? Uh, potentially, but I think it's time to get the rest of the party in, so is it- Yeah. We are all standing around this tear in reality. You hear another series of strange noises, and this is when Kyle and Winward appear. And I don't know, where do you all want to appear? Do you want to appear on stage, or? I think we walk in from stage, from stage right. Just, yeah. it is a weird, arm in arm, unhurried, just having a, a, a casual little stroll. Yeah, and also Kyle is ho is holding a staff like a sword. Yes! Oh, yeah. Dusty got upgrades! Yeah. <laughs> yeah, um... That's not how you wield that. True. Reminds me here. <laughs> Who all has met George here? I don't feel like most of you haven't met George. I haven't met, but Hess knows of George. I know of him. Do you know of George? Millie, I feel like you've met George. Because George helped protect your theater. I think we've decided that I, I know of him and know that I have had dealings with his agents, but haven't met him in person. Gotcha. So none of y'all recognize the staff that Kyle's holding like a sword. Yep. Nice. Well, good evening, everybody. Glad to see that we've all made it safe and sound. How are you? I'm doing great. It's so good to see you. 
I'm gonna look at Hess and we go, what happened to you? Oh yes, same. I am going to kick this motherfucker's ass and hurls another fireball. Could you please put out that fire also, thank you. She did, she got the, the curtains already. No, no, you just did another one. Give me the roll. That, you're not actually shooting the entity doing that. You realize that, right? You realize she is, like, not very rational at this point and is, like... That's why Angel's pointing it out. <laughs> okay. She's already thrown the fire, though. Yeah, no, she's already thrown it, but this is, the like, the third one now, so... Eight altogether, so... Another success at a cost. Yeah. Can I change into my demon form. After giving uh, Wardy a quick peck on the cheek, I am going to uncouple and turn into my buff demon form and sort of just fly in front of Hess to sort of like calm her down. Just be like, what are you doing? I am okay with you stopping her before, yes, and like just catching her mid about to throw. <laughs> Roll to get in the way. I'm going to mark a corruption so that I don't have to roll for that, and I mean, not to get in the way, just to turn into buff me. Okay, yeah, um. Cool. Uh, so. so I get all. Yes, because I'd rather not have Millie, like, ban me from the theater forever after all this. Yeah. This place is already burnt down once. So for everyone who hasn't seen the demon form yet, would you describe to us what the demon form looks like? Hot. Hot. Sure. Kyle is hot, but demon buff Kyle is hotter. Basically, their hair sort of turns into, like, flowing feathers that are, like, red, but it looks like it's a side, side shave still. Fingernails are turned into black claws, uh, so they're there. Uh, they have fire wings, and they're, they look like their skin sort of, like, becomes scarred as it sort of travels down their body, and their eyes are also black, but, like, flames. So, quite hot. And they do fly in front of Millie. And you said, get in the way? Yeah, roll to get in the way. Which is... So, roll with their circle. What is your circle, Hess? I am power. That is a 10. All right. So you give her a negative 2 to the roll. Yeah, so it fizzles out then, because I had an 8 altogether, okay. so 6. I kind of picture that instead of hitting the thing as Kyle steps in front of you, it just, like, it hits them, but it does It hits Kyle's ass. <laughs> It hits Kyle's oh. ass. It fizzles completely. And I'm like, wait. <laughs> Millie is backing away from this and has kind of sidles over next to Windward and just gives him like a silent high five. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Windward's eyebrows just go like all the way up looking uh, like, yes, yes, indeed. You go, girl. Did you have a next, did you have a next move or? I'm getting a headache. I think Millie's just going to look around and be like, where's Cole? was right behind me, I thought. So Cole, what, are, what have you been up to? You look up into the balcony, and I'm sitting relatively casually on the balcony and just kind of wave down at y'all. What you don't see is my cell phone that I've propped up uh, on the railing of the balcony that is currently FaceTiming both the moms and my inner circle group that have been unnamed to all of you at this point. Cool, 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 cool. So I'm just sitting yeah. up there and I wave. Out of character question. Ava, do you have any harm? Does anybody have any uh, harm that they need healed? <laughs> Ava especially. <laughs> Angel. She hides it really well. Her jacket hides it, okay? It's not outwardly obvious because <laughs> they've been minorly tended to. Right. Um, yeah. I think... Hess is more visible because hers is... I've got one, two, three boxes marked, so like, bloody nose, blood tears from the eyes. <laughs> oh, I'm not saying Angels isn't less serious. She's got four boxes marked. Yeah. Um, it's just that her arms were shredded. 
and leather jacket, plus they've been stitched up. Yeah. I was just, because Kyle is already over with Hess, I was gonna basically kind of like walk past, uh, walk past Millie and hop down from the stage, I presume. Or is uh, Angel's like out in the audience? Yeah, she'd be probably about halfway to the stage. Right. Yeah, when we're just steps off of the stage and, and lands with kind of a practice grace, walks uh, out and says, um, Oh, you do look like you've uh, made it in a bit worse for the wear. I'm, however, I am I'm very glad that you could come and be here. And places a hand on you. I'm going to go ahead and take one corruption to use nature's caress. Heal two harm, starting with critical wounds. What sort of, yeah, so if you just took your, healed your top two harm, what sort of healing would that look like for you? Given that she wears a leather jacket, it wouldn't be immediately obvious, but... Yeah, but what would it feel like? (laughs) That would be an insane amount of, like, have you ever had hives? Just all up and down her arms, especially, like, her... What was it? it was her, mostly her upper arms, right? Because he was like, yeah, that he he kind of like had you by around the shoulders, and then when you need him, he dropped you, but it kind of shredded your arms. Yeah, there's like thousands of tiny little bugs under her skin, like as it's healing and the itching and burning. Thank you. As I said, um. Glad that you could join us, and uh, hopefully afterwards you can join us a bit more freely. And then turns back to face the scar in reality. Now that everybody's here, I would like to introduce you guys to a new friend of mine. He's standing very far away and hasn't moved since other people started showing up, but you're, you know where he is. Okay, great. I will not be pointing him out at this exact moment, because it would be safer for him. You guys know the big scary man that's been around making problems, right? Hess doesn't say anything, but the wings just flare out even more angry. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Right. So he was in that body over there, and she's going to point at the body. But he's not in there anymore. None of y'all can see it from this vantage point, because it's, like, between the seeds, but Angel saw. Mm -hmm. So nobody's in that currently, but we'll fix that later. No problem. That said, the being that was in that body has had a change of the heart that he doesn't currently possess, and is mm, a friend now. Oh. He's gonna help us fight the thing that he used to be because he was a part of it that's now broken off and going in a different direction. Millie, dear. Hi. You know how much I love you, right? Well, sure. You'll have to forgive me if Mm. I don't really trust your read on this thing. Given your track record. Yeah, no, I understand that. I do, I realize. No, but Millie, I get it. Right? I sort of talk to the person. He's fine. He just wants to learn life, right? That's right? Yeah. So what happened? We went on this wonderful tour of the stars. Very romantic. Very cool. Nice. Didn't go inside at all. And it, it, basically, he showed me that what he used to be was a being of intense hunger that just took things in and destroyed them and shat out worlds that no longer were worth anything or useful or alive or good for anything anymore. And that was just a waste. And so I helped him to see that it would be better if perhaps he experienced the worlds and left them intact rather than destroying them and getting nothing out of it. Exactly. And Kyle is agreeing in the background. It's like, yeah! exactly what I thought he said and you know totally you know fine with that no see no we're not so afraid of us meeting we're going to be best friends 
He doesn't have to actively do anything to destroy the world. He destroys them just by being here because he doesn't belong here. And that came from his own mouth before the change of heart. I mean, Air we all don't really belong. We're all misfits. We can all. I mean, metaphysically, not metaphorically. Hess, you want to say something? <laughs> Question: Hearing Millie talk about Star Journey is that similar to what I went on? You definitely get the feeling she probably saw something very similar to what you saw when you were searching for a cat and traveling through the multiverse and you saw what was between them. You might not have gotten the full picture of what she saw and learned, but now that you think about it, which you probably shouldn't think about it too long, she saw the same thing you did. But seriously, don't think about that too long. It was terrifying, but joke's on you, because I'm into that. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, cool. Cthulhu fucking aside. Monster fucking's a big genre. Agreed. Yeah. I'm like, we got at least two people on this call that are into that. <laughs> at least two. Both in character and out, so whatever. I'm not saying anything out of character. I'm just saying. <laughs> Angel's not into that. <laughs> not this monster, anyway. Nah. Cole's indecided. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool to try anything once type <laughs> honestly yeah <laughs> amazing fair oh i love how this is coming out in the finale kyle is the try anything three times type i've played so much about you and when we're one to just get over the fear of doing it two for practice and three to see whether you really like it not a bad philosophy Thank it's you. really not um <laughs> Moving on to the existential dread that is floating above the <laughs> stage. <laughs> yeah, we probably should. Yeah, no, I and think hearing this, Hess whirls around as much as she can, because Kyle is stronger than her. Has be like, you saw nothing. It is a hunger. It eats everything. It wants to destroy everything. And it took everything from me. And I am going to end it. Now get out of my fucking way. Hess, Dear. You have to slow down for a moment. I'm not saying don't, but you have to. We have to think about this rationally. You're not doing nothing by hurling fireballs out into the void. Yeah, what what the angry one said. But also, yeah, chill, babe. Like, really, we're go we're gonna handle this. No, you don't get to chill me to chill. You got what you wanted back. You finally are reconnected with Winward. And that's how I'm great. I'm happy for you both. However, I almost had her back. I was right there and it took her from me. And it is going to suffer everything I have felt these past six months at my hands. You know what? I totally agree with you and I let her go. <laughs> it's cute you think you can harm me. You realize that that presence has grown. In Angel's reaching room. for her staff again. Give me the roll. And it's not coming from Charlie, right? No, it's not coming from Charlie. It seems to be coming from the thing you're all standing around. Eleven. It appears. Yeah. You're not sure how long you'll be able to keep it, but it's there and it's the most solid it's felt in a long time since the connection was broken. Yeah, so Angel, like, reaches out into the air, a staff appears in her hand, and despite what she just said to Hess, she's now charging for the stage. Oh yeah, Hess is, I'm assuming she had the backpack in her hand, just throws it at whoever is going to catch it, not realizing, just in anger, and just charges in, fist back, ready to punch. You just fling it off to the side, and Kylie realize, oh wait, that's my backpack. Oh wait, that's mine! <laughs> I, I do fly and grab it. <laughs> okay, I'll say you're- I'm not gonna make you roll, like, you can catch it, but before we find, get to what's in the backpack, Angel and Hess, you are attacking, and like, as you're flying towards it, you can see that something is starting to come through. Inky tendrils of darkness, and that presence is intensifying. And it just thinks you're so adorable, thinking you can do anything. So what do you do? 
are we still in the same scene or is it a new scene technically still on the same scene i think and i think you probably need to roll again to channel maybe yes um your hold lasts until you spend it or the scene ends yes so i can re-roll since i spent it all yeah oh hallelujah that is so much better 11 plus 3 14 so i got oh heck yeah you know what that was really good so i'm gonna say you get four great so, because she's coming close, um, her hand just rears back and uh, flying in, does the Superman punch, and around it just sparkles these black and green witch flames as she just leans in and just sucker punches it as hard as she, like, super plucks punch as hard as she can. Nice. Give me the roll for the attack. Uh, and I mark another corruption because I'm using. Uh, whatever that is to use spirit instead of blood nine altogether right so uh, could I use my action to lend a hand yeah also she's power that's basically what I was doing anyway I'm still holding true to my oaths whether they are fractured or not and I have an oath to protect a member of power do it give me the roll roll with power yeah twelve all right. Picture you coming in behind and like battering off uh, tendrils as they're running in to to grab Hess with the staff. Yeah. Your punch connects and it causes damage, and you see the shadows burning off, but you don't see the shadows that are coming towards you because this thing almost reaches the ceiling. It's a pretty big tear. So, Angel, what does it look like? So Angel was a bit further behind than Hess was, but then it's just like almost in the blink of an eye, it's like she's just there. And like the tendrils are reaching out for Hess and she just blocks it with her staff and they wound up wrapped around the staff and then she just like rips them apart. Just like twists the staff and pulls them off. And they dissipate. It's it's like you almost hear this hiss of pain and anger in all of your heads. Uh, so, as you make the joke, it's like spaghetti. You just roll it around your fork. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Just a magic stick that you get from your boss. And, Millie, you, you hear Charlie's voice echoing in your head. You can harm it, but it's not going to do anything until you've destroyed the tether. And I think I'm just going to kind of shout that out. Like, we have to destroy the tether. This is all for nothing. And, Kyla, you have the tether. It's in your backpack. Do I remember? Kyle, where the feck did you leave the tether? Deus Ex Moxina. Things could have, like, throw- fallen out as Hess throws it and clunk, 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 clunk. I'm going to roll a random dice. Odds I remember, evens I don't. Uh, I do remember. Congratulations, do you remember even after all of the other things that you remembered? All of the other things that I remembered. So, as I catch this backpack, and I catch it, right? Like, there's no need for me to roll to catch it? You know, so you're able to catch it, or at least, like, pick it up. As I catch it, Hess's words are, like, going through my mind. And also, like, I remember the promises of uh, that little thing that I talked to. I'm going to side with my bestie, because my bestie. And I open the backpack, and I notice there's these nunchucks here and i sort of like bring them out and i say what would happen if i destroyed this right now why would you want to do that i could give you just you've ever do wanted. it just immediately starts whispering in your head i'm going to look straight at wardy and say i already have everything i want god damn it stop being such a hallmark movie you two <laughs> i'm going to break it you know, just try to, like, hold on to these two nunchucks and sort of, like, try to coolly, like, slam it across my thigh and break it, or whatever. Okay, um... I guess turn to violence? Sweet! <laughs> Five, six, seven... You succeed, but at a cost? Um... Cost! You inflict harm as established. And your opposition chooses one, they inflict harm, they put you in a bad spot, or they inflict create an opening tar. to flee. Inflict harm. I'm sorry. No, just, I get to just, choose. 
Just destroy me. Sorry. <laughs> Dad, don't worry, I'm not gonna do it. At least not anything he wants. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse you, I will come through the screen. Like I said, there are several people who will yell at me if I kill Kyle. But yes, that is what I wrote. You're able to break it. Oh. As I said, you inflict harm as established. But the darkness that comes out of it just surrounds you. You hear a voice in your head sounds different this time. I want you to regret it. I'll make sure he never sees it again. Tempest Malta is a production of Pseudonym Social, changing reality one story at a time. It is an actual play podcast using Urban Shadows 2E Quick Start Guide, and it's set once again in the town of Oak Ridge, Tennessee. I am your keeper and producer. Hello everyone, it's Casey again. I'll be playing Cass Pravda, the Oracle Playbook. My name is Zadkiel, or just Zad. In this game, I am going to be playing Windward Pudge, and they are using the Imp playbook. Hi there, I'm Maria Perry. I'm playing Nilly Elza, your local vampy vampire. I am Blaze, and I'll be playing Jason Madison Coleman, the Aware. Sup, y'all? I'm Fennec Foxfire. I will be playing Hess, playing from the Book of the Wizard. Hi, I'm Gliza. I will be playing Kyle of the Tainted Playbook. I am Ava Rogers. I will be playing Angel Day, the Sworn. To get more information on this or any of our other shows, check out our website at pseudonymsocial.com.